This is the. Uh, oh, you're hiding out of the camera now. I had you in focus there. All right, Miles Bonney show with my magical guest, Scribe. Scribe, and as I like to begin show sometimes, what is it that you would say that you do? Um, combination. You like said paint walls, do illustrations, um, a little bit of everything. Awesome. Mostly in the art world. So. Absolutely, the art world. Um, I would probably. Uh, frame it as visual artist mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, with occasional multi, well, often multimedia artist, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. All sorts of uh, installations and stuff like that for galleries. Yeah. Uh, uh, kind of getting into the 3D realm lately. Mm -hmm. Which we will get to. We have some, some exclusives you were kind enough to, to bring to the show. Yeah, this will be the first time they're shown, and I, I got the final okay uh, today, so we'll pull them out. Pull I'm them very out excited about that. Thank It's an honor for for the show viewers and myself oh, to witness thanks um well where should we start i mean you know point of reference um i probably was most aware of you personally just from um after coming to the area because i haven't been here as long as you have mm -hmm. um through uh joe good um mr gamby mm -hmm. and um you have a very very deep history with kansas city and and art and uh visual expression um obviously you could probably talk about your history forever because yeah. it's there's a lot that's gone on in the past but how would you it is crazy because i've i've i moved here from boston to go to the kansas city art institute and uh it wasn't until i was talking i've been with my wife the same amount of time we started dating almost instantly um when we were in college and uh, i think i started my 16th year here your 16th year in kansas city Oh, of your life. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So uh, I lived a lot of different places around the world uh, when I was growing up and lived in California for a while, Israel, London, um, finished high school in Boston and ended up in Kansas City. And awesome. So it was kind of a mover, partially because of my parents, but never thought that I'd be like rooted for right. so long. Well, and I, I hear I heard parts about the fact that you've been in Boston, which I often forget. It, in what ways did your experiences before Kansas City um, kind of influence what happened once you got here? Um, I don't know how much it influenced, um, you know, what I did when I got here. It was actually meeting Gear and East and stuff that kind of brought out what I was already into and, and took it to a whole nother personal level of actually being able to meet artists like them. And I mean, I took, I took the train to school every day, I took yeah. the subway into Boston and saw murals, graffiti and all kinds of stuff. And I was obsessed uh, with it and loved it, but it's a, you know, it's a secretive scene. It's hard to meet people. And then when you're in high school, it's not like you can actually get out a lot of places when they're already kind of hiding and find those people. Um, so when I came to, to go to school here, I got hooked up with a couple people and it changed my life. Awesome. And g given that, uh, approximately what years would have been around that you were in Boston? Because that probably had an effect on what graffiti at that time was yeah. with respect to popular culture and such. Um, well, and, and I guess much like the a lot of the sometimes people say about the hip-hop culture and hip-hop music, uh, I came here in 93, so it was like early 90s, late 80s um, stuff, and uh, graffiti obviously has a much deeper history than that, but, um, and I, I hate to say this about Boston because I don't know everything about the history because I haven't met enough people, yeah. but it really seemed like it was booming at that time, and there was a lot of um, unique styles for that area that were coming out. And I'm not a lettering guy, uh, but seeing a lot of the color schemes and things like they did affected me. Yeah. Um, what is it like not being a lettering guy? <laughs> because, cause, you, know, uh, you know, my limited understanding um, or just my life's exposure to it all, that's kind of the thing. Yeah. Like when people think graffiti or just anything that derived from or has influence from the graffiti scenes mm -hmm. or just art, um, it's based on letters. Yeah. And, um, Rightfully it, so. You know. And it's based, it's ba based around people's versions of letters and, and mm -hmm. numbers. Um, 
I mean, I understand that that's you know some of the earliest people. What was it? Someone one eight three and a couple of the people. I don't. I might get this completely wrong. I do not claim to be a historian. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's hard to keep it all straight and remember because some of them sometimes are kind of just a quick flash of things. But um, I think, I mean, for me, everybody that I hung around with was into lettering, and I didn't have a whole lot of personal influences on me that were saying like this is how you should paint and do characters. But, you know, people like Gear, people like East, Cry, who I grew up around, they had a standard that they were trying to set all the time, and that's really what ended up motivating me. So, a standard by, like, constant improvement or aiming for something specific? Yeah, they just, they were really into productions. You know, some people only go out and bomb. Some people, um, you know, only do throw-ups or something like that. Some people do productions, but they just kind of stick to certain kinds of lettering forms and um, we kind of started really getting into doing scenic stuff and really tying it all together it almost seemed like the lettering was like living you know like in a, a world or a story yeah. uh, so to say and uh, when gear and I were doing a lot of stuff together at that time uh, it was almost kind of like the the lettering was like part of the landscape the same way it was like when you're walking around you know, like Westport, and it yeah. was part of that landscape. We were kind of like almost making another level sure. um, into the stories, I guess, I was te um, telling. And yeah. the same way that I walked around lettering and grew up with that stuff, that's kind of what I always tried to make my characters look like when sure. they were interacting with their stuff. Um, I've probably only seen about, I hesitate to even say a third of what's up now that you've done around Kansas City, but mm -hmm. um, one of the, as you spoke about that, one of the pieces that stood out to me was the one by Fox mm -hmm. on Southwest Boulevard, I guess, near Broadway. Mm -hmm. um, but that one is kind of desertish. Yeah, yeah, it's still there. And, yeah, yeah, it's still there, and I loved it. And I remember um, that was one of the first places that, that I was shown um, mm -hmm. around Kansas City, and I just just kind of to come up on it it's it's three walls it's kind of like a very short driveway if you will yeah if you're coming down like i-35 and you're actually heading north into the city from uh like the johnson county direction if you come off the 18th street exit into the arts district like you'll be forced at sitting at a light right in front right. of it so yeah uh, which is a great spot <laughs> absolutely but i mean just to say like when i was there in the midst of it it's literally like a piece that surrounds you because it's in three walls mm -hmm. and it has so much depth to it and, and there's so much going on and there's so much life within it that I'd, I'd encourage everybody to go there and just experience it. Yeah, we, almost had the them in, we almost had them sold on painting the ground. Uh, how crazy. Why not? Why not? Standing. Uh, it just doesn't hold up and it's understandable that, you know, um, cars driving over it, rain, you know, yeah. water's powerful stuff so so were they kind of thinking that they were looking out for you like wasting time on something that would disappear because it would have been cool for a week or so oh yeah yeah it would have <laughs> been a combination of i think it's a combination of both i mean i i would be down for putting in the effort to get a photo of that moment Absolutely. You know, and walk away with it and be fine yeah uh but you know it's just bad maintenance issue but yeah. it's been holding up great it's been there for no, several it's... years and it's still uh bright and vibrant so yeah, it's beautiful we're, we're lucky it doesn't get a lot of uh solid sun on it sure um do you have then shots of most of the pieces that you've done or, or were th was there a period where you didn't take them then you started taking them or how does that all work um there's a lot of stories but i've had things stolen had, you know apartments broken into and had things come up missing uh just the other day i had a friend call me from cincinnati and we were talking about things i had and didn't have and you know i go through a phase where i was really good about you know documenting everything mm -hmm. And he started talking to me about stuff, and I couldn't even remember I painted. Hmm. And it wasn't until the box showed up, because I was going to scan them all, that I kind of like got a revisit of the past, because it just just constantly focused on, on other things. You just don't sit there and reminisce about it a whole lot unless yeah. you go through photos. And uh, it was crazy, the stuff he had. And just you forget what you do. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and... Um Thank you for submitting a couple segments that we'll use here on the show. Mm -hmm. um, it might be a good time to go to the first one, which was I'd like to probably start with the one that of just your artwork. Okay. And I wonder whether um, a lot of those photos, or some of them at least, were ones that people had, I guess in essence, submitted to you, or you had refound, or a lot of them things you've had have had for a while. Or no, in fact, I mean I'm trying to remember everything yeah, that's in there. Yeah. But I think that most of the stuff that is in there um, is stuff from I'd say that the last three 
pushing it to four years. Oh, okay. Um, but I'd done some shows in like Montreal. I did a show in Mexico City and some different places. And so some of those photos of uh, random spots and stuff like that are from there. Cool. Well, we'll go to this segment and maybe we'll come back. Magic. Yeah, the magic thing. Yeah. I try to not be too magical in here, but I can do something fancy with my fingers. Okay. My infant daughter used to like that, so maybe I could do something similar. Um, but when we come back, um, we'll um, explore some of the amazing artifacts and uh, creations that he brought with him today. Um, and maybe we'll talk a little about the traveling and just kind of Kansas City in general, as I like to keep it. Um, so we'll go to the segment, um, and we'll be back in a second. Cool. Hope you enjoy it. Magic thing. Thank you. 
and try again. We're back. So, um, there you go. That was kind of hopefully a, you know, pretty complete retrospective of things you've done the last couple of years. Yeah, Obviously, you can't yeah. include everything, but... No, I could have kept going. I mean, I've, I've been blessed that I've had uh, a really crazy, busy uh, several years, and I wanted to just keep adding photos and stuff, but I didn't want to bore, <laughs> well, bore anybody. You know, it is what, what we want it to be, so yeah, I, I, I thought I it was beautiful. I don't get a, a chance, like, a, I, I think it's cool that you guys get a chance to go out and DJ and do stuff like that and get in front of people uh, and interact with the people, and I feel like I've been kind of a hermit, you know, the last several years. Uh -huh. I mean, not just because of the family thing and, and getting involved in that, but... Um, you know, unless you know where to look, and you, or I haven't had a chance to do as many walls, I feel like I've kind of faded off into the background lately. Well, that's why I appreciate you yeah. being able to come on the show, you know, because yeah. it's an honor for me. Yeah. You know, I definitely have a lot of respect for you. Yeah. All right. Well, um, what are some things that, um, as we were talking about, I'm not going to try to act like I'm coming up with a concept that's completely fresh. We were talking about... Um, you know, you have been interviewed many times, mm -hmm. and um, there are some things that perhaps haven't been touched on that we could address that just to kind of inform the public of uh, aspects of history that you feel may have not been documented sufficiently or uh, however you like to phrase it, you know. I mean, there, there were some other names sprinkled in there, uh, but I'd say that, like, you know, when I first moved here in 93 and I hooked up with Gear and East and uh, Cry, don't ever want to, you know, forget Cry. Um, Can you hold but, that? Uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> some of the kind of stuff that, like, I guess we went through that people may not know in order to get uh, the ball rolling for yeah. the stuff that we did around Westport. I mean, if you happen to have seen stuff that we've done around the area, within a couple of years, we just really went crazy and we were just painting things all up and down Broadway. Um, and, you know, like we were blessed that I guess our hands were staying busy for that many years. But we didn't have the, th the stuff that people don't know about is the stuff that we didn't have when we were doing it. We lived over on basically 43rd and Walnut mm -hmm. over by the kind of Art Institute and the Wild Oats over there. Yeah. And the first couple jobs, first several jobs that we got that were in that area, we would pack up all the gallons of paint and all the spray paint into giant army duffel bags and we would each carry a 20-foot extension ladder all the way to like big dudes music wow and we would paint that's all a, day long more like the big dudes one that's yeah. how it was done yeah no wow. car no nothing because you didn't have um, a car cause no didn't. we didn't wow. no um you know i was fresh out of getting in trouble um, you know, I didn't have to drive because I was living in the dorms and now we were living in an apartment and, uh, you know, I wasn't even used to thinking about driving cause I was from Boston and took mm -hmm. buses and subways and the transportation here wasn't that great. But just the, I guess the dedication of like just trying to get the ball rolling and doing what you have to do and not letting those kinds of uh, obstacles stop you because we'd sit there and carry it all the way there and then you know throw the stuff on the ground and our shoulders would just hurt so bad from the metal digging into our shoulders and a 20 foot extension ladder I'd I, I dare people to carry it a block, and then they'll see what's up. Yeah, and, that was, <laughs> and that's not counting gallons of paint in a like giant gallons. army. Yeah, gallons. So I carry a five-gallon bucket with a, you know, basically with a whole bunch of spray paint added onto that, and then we each had a ladder. We'd have to take a break, like after and that, so, to recoup, recoup. Oh, we'd stop and we'd be chilling. We'd look like homeless guys, like hanging out, you know, like we just stole people's ladders because we'd be, we'd end up on Westport Road and Broadway, you know, sitting there panting, set the stuff down for a while, and then pick it back up and kind of hobbled down Broadway and it's like I mean, you think about it it's just two dudes walking down Broadway with giant ladders and a bunch of stuff right. um, but I mean I guess the reason why I tell that story is because I hear stories about younger kids that say things like oh it's really hard to get permission walls or it's hard to get these things done and sometimes when you don't really have all the resources that would make the situation perfect you just have to like kill yourself to get it done and do it. Was it hard? I mean, that was the manual labor aspect. Was it hard to actually, you know, how how did those relationships get built to the point that you guys came to the position where you were able to do lots of walls? Um, I mean, 
How does that happen? Well, like Big Dude's music, they found me actually because I was on the news after I was arrested. Mm. And uh, that was like a miracle to me. Because, Is that clip online? Uh, I don't know. Okay. It's old school. So you, that's, that'd be summer of 93 if you so, want to look so, for it. <laughs> well, I'll do my best, but if someone yeah. has it out there, I'd love to. Yeah, to I don't have it. Right. Uh, so I didn't have a car. So I didn't Get have, looking. Yeah, <laughs> so I didn't have a VCR either. Right. <laughs> uh, but uh, so... You know, they, they found me through uh, probation officer and stuff like that. And uh, then we painted that one. And that was interesting because Kansas City wasn't ready for it. And we literally had people drive by us and flip us off, scream at us, throw food. Um, it was nuts. People just, they, they instantly tied it to the gang stuff because mm. it, um, I mean, it, it's not like New York and other places on the East and West Coast where people had already started growing up with it and they mm. may still make the decision whether they like it or dislike it but here it was like besides the random illegal stuff that popped up and around it was never that far in people's faces mm -hmm. um so i mean that was a kind of a fun transition to watch that thing come about and a lot of people really started opening up to it but it was like doing the walks back home to Walnut uh, with the ladders and stuff and there used to be an old head shop called Zowie's down there mm. and they were in their building and working on the place we saw they had a wall and we just opened the door and said hey man we just painted something up the street you know what do you want to do <laughs> and uh, it, it was just about opening random doors and around that same time I read a stuff about um, some stuff about Disney who went through a lot of Similar things, you know, he was in Kansas City, uh, you know, originally mm -hmm. uh, with his studios and stuff, um, not too far off of Troost. And Do you know approximately what cross street? I'm just curious. No, uh, it's not account. hard to find. It's not, right. hard, it's not hard to find at all. But awesome. his first studios, when he was first doing like Mortimer and um, stuff, was all in Kansas City. That's partially what brought me here, was wow. that old school history huh. of animation. Um, but the... Uh, one of the things I read about him was when he was going to make Disneyland. And uh, I know a lot of people aren't really that into the, like the Disney Corporation, but um, the, the the guy who built it was an amazing person. The yeah. corporate aspects after, not so great. Yeah. Um, but he, I forgot how many banks he got turned down by. It was over 50 wow. before, sure. but to get funded in order to start it. And this was a guy that had no told to him over and over and over again. And that's the thing I always remembered. Every door I'd open in Kansas City and be like, hey, man, you want your wall painted? No. All right. right. You know, and you go to the next one. Hey, man, you want your door painted? And, mm. and Gear and I just used to go out and just ask and ask and ask. And so sometimes when I hear people say, I already went and asked like five people and everybody right. said no, it's like, it it takes more than that. Yeah. Well, I definitely see parallels. I mean, I definitely don't have the uh, the history that you have regarding mm -hmm. effort around here, but there's parallels in all aspects of life, I think, in that. Yeah. And that there's certain people that wonder how other people do it, complain about maybe the small things, and don't actually put their all into fulfilling that interest. Yeah. I mean, if you care about it enough, you'll you'll push yourself to, to go a little farther. I mean, now I look back on it and laugh and just think about how silly we must have looked but um we definitely loved what we were doing yeah. you know enough to like you know deal with the pain rain and not getting paid yeah and through that time i mean it, it took doing that yeah to get to where things were after the fact and but that's the seed planting when people say like oh uh, you know people know scribe or they know gear or other artists around here that so it's easy for you so um they just don't know that part of it sometimes yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh they, you know, when you think about 16 years and then you start coming into your own and you start, things start to kind of like take on their own life um, and they don't um, require, you know, you're still working hard to make what you need to make. But as far as like knocking on the doors aren't sure. as hard anymore, it, it takes so many years. Are you still getting requests periodically to do things I get, in the public, you know? Yeah, I still get requests for like walls and stuff right now. It's just about been juggling uh, what my priorities are. Um, you know, I have a family now and stuff, and um, one of the things I really try to make sure and juggle is that if I take on jobs and they're the kind of things that I can do at home, it means I'm that much closer to my kids and I can actually set the piece of work down or turn off the computer and hang out with them for a while and do something. I am trying to get there. <laughs> yeah. 
And, this uh, close. Yeah, and it's hard. And I mean, I don't. I still work a full time job at Children's yeah. Mercy, um, and then come home and do that stuff. Uh, I go in at six in the morning. I get off at two thirty, which yeah. is great because uh, I have a lot more. I have a longer day to like hang out with them and make those things work. So sure. thank you, Children's Mercy. Absolutely. I'm just uh, curious for my person's sake. Like, did you then have to work out? Did you come in that early, or was that their suggestion? Um, I'm part. I'm kind of integrated in with the maintenance staff, the guys that do the maintenance, painting, fix toilets, and all kinds of stuff. It's all around plant operations. And uh, it started out that, I mean, I work with a bunch of those guys as a crew. Um, I work with this guy, Rod and Kevin, who are both just like incredible carpenters and help bring some of the stuff that I come up with and the silly ideas I push them through. Uh, but, um, and they're really patient with me. Yeah. Um, and now we just make stuff for kids to, you know, like hang out and chill in. And so I, I get a lot of that creative outlet um, when I when I can go to work um, and then I come home and and do a different kind of creative stuff that isn't quite so uh, G rated I guess all yeah, the time. Absolutely. So. Something I think would be awesome would be a scribe tour of Children's Mercy. Yeah. <laughs> Only yeah. because you know here's this guy said so, you know yourself such mm -hmm. as yourself, really yourself who um, you know is respected for other things mm -hmm. but then you but then you, this is your playground in some ways. Yeah, it is. And it's your modern um, gallery. Yeah. that is put to use which is even better yeah. probably and and I know I would like to just hey man let me stop at Children Mercy and just walk around and see if I find some of your stuff in random places you know that yeah. I mean that's a pretty awesome situation and it's great like you said of Children Mercy to recognize that that has obviously it has value but to yeah. not maybe put as many restraints on you as yeah, they and, could and it was a learning experience for both of us they knew some of my past and they were a little you know w wondering yeah, yeah they were into the talent but like you know understood where i came from and and they had a right to to think that at first i was like well, you know what's the deal i'm a good-hearted guy mm -hmm. um so we we learned how to work together and it's reached that point where I think that there's a mutual respect and they know that like my mission there is to make stuff for the kids. When I first got there I was just so hyped that I went to work every day and I did some drawing. Yeah. And I kind of like lost the focus and was focused on like me because that was a full-time job doing art was something that I'd been wanting for so long yeah. and I got there and uh you know so it was just me me me. Then I got several emails through my website of people that actually connected the dots between like hanging out in there and then driving home and seeing the wall mm. on the way home. And they'd say the nicest things like, you know, my kid was in there stressed on like getting a shot or some kind of therapy or something like that. And to be able to sit in a place and like ha create a diversion and have something to talk about with my kid for a while. Mm. Um, you know, made them not sitting there going, I'm getting a shot, I'm getting a shot, I'm getting a shot, you know, for however, you know, you know how waiting rooms are. Yeah, you wait yeah. there for a while. Uh, so, and it kind of dawned on me, like, why I was, why I was really there. And it just, uh, it, my perspective kind of switched back to where it should have been. And uh, since then, I mean, it's just, uh, I want to push that, that goal even farther so that kids are kind of walking into a wonderland and just, you know, like, not freaked out by medical stuff at all. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that being said, I'd like to get into some of the stuff you brought. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'd like to, I mean, you know, I have this, these things next to me, so <laughs> this is a, a wonderful creature you brought. Yeah. I like. I show the bottom because I like the little the little nipples. The <laughs> yeah, they nipples. Out of yeah. Oh, I mean, we. My wife and I call it nipple fabric, but I don't know if that's the appropriate term. I like that name. So. Who doesn't like nipples? We're all yep. babies, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> so, what, so break this down for the for those out there. Um, uh, my wife Elisa is a really talented plush artist. She went to the art institute. Um, she graduated with a fiber degree. Took some time off. Uh, been doing the family thing and then just recently started getting back into doing stuff um i started getting into like modifying toys painting toys uh sculpting my own and then she started getting into doing this plush stuff um and it's kind of like skyrocketed for her. um uh, just most recently um you know like one of the production uh firms from HGTV bought her stuff, so wow. sometime this season her stuff could be popping up on that show, uh, Showdown. I don't know. I, I haven't personally seen the show, awesome. but um, I'm really proud of her that um, she's doing that. She's doing the San Diego Comic Con. Um, we have a show together this May. 
uh, where we're doing a group, uh, an installation together about uh, one of my characters who hunts plush animals. <laughs> All right. so, does, he, does he hurt the plush animals? Or? Yeah, they're mounted on plaques, just like you would go into a big, okay. a big game. So she, she's going to have small stuff like this that people can walk away with, but also like literal like big game like deer heads and stuff mounted like on that plaques? are on plaques that are cute and I stuff. So. Save my allowance. Yeah, it's going to be that funny, awesome. funny stuff. Uh, so. It, uh, beware of the plush hunter, I guess. Is there uh, any way for people to learn more about this, like website or things to connect um, with this? I think on, on one of the uh, clips I gave you at the end, it has my website, and yeah. then underneath it, in smaller letters, it says 40threads.com, and that's Elisa's site. Cool. Um, she does all kinds of like crazy commission stuff for people. She makes sweatshirts for kids and adults and just all around, just wild stuff. Awesome. So I'm proud of her. Cool. We'll keep it moving. I'm thinking we'll go through these, and then we'll get to the next clip, and then we'll do some music stuff. Yeah. Oh, that other stuff was just silly stickers. I know, but this is it. awesome. I don't have <laughs> stuff like this. I mean, this is like your world. You yeah, know? Most people yeah. don't have stickers of this length that are like, you <laughs> Full know, production yeah, pieces. Landscapes. I mean, this is this is awesome. You know, it's like commonplace to you. Yeah. So break, break this quote-unquote silly thing down um it's just a wall i painted in pueblo colorado um probably sometime last year and uh uh there's a couple of snippets in in the wall section that you played that show some of that stuff um but i was putting out sticker material for another job and i just slid the photo in there because i thought yeah. it'd be funny and awesome. I, um occasionally give that stuff away if it's i really hard for if me i can where to put this because it's so it's yes. big I, yeah it, no but wherever i put it that's where it stays it is it is that's it's an aggressive it's an aggressive right? sticker too so well, <laughs> I don't know. somebody with a really big gold bumper maybe that's what i was thinking it's gonna put my bumper but i don't think <laughs> running into it yeah not that i get hit a lot but yeah you know all right, so this is another piece because I mean, people. I mean, granted, they saw the slideshow, but this is yeah. like, just still more, you know. So this is a is it a cat? Yeah, it's just a, a rocket. Ca yeah, a cat riding a riding a rocket. Rocket. So Why I, was, not? I don't know. It's just something I thought of when I was hanging out in bed watching TV. All right, and then where is this one from? This um, piece? I was actually in Denver. That's with my friend um, Emit. Um, yeah. There's several people from like DF crew and ATT crew that like have made some serious influences on me. Emit is one of them. East is obviously uh, one of them. I got a friend named Rapes. Um, actually, probably best friend you know I've had in a long time. Uh, and uh, you know those guys, the the level of what they do in lettering uh, is what actually pushes me to make sure that my stuff is clean and looks natural hmm. um, next what, what to them. What do you mean natural? Um, poses that, that aren't stiff, um, things that flow from a character into um, a piece so that they look like they were always supposed to go together and it wasn't just like me painting my thing and them painting their thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I could, we could do collages if we were going to do that stuff and just cut each other's stuff out and stick it together. Sure. Uh, but just trying to figure out how to, you know, like make everything flow together. Yeah. And this is the last thing on my side of the <laughs> camera this is a um pat nice 12 inch pat nice a local uh dj and mm -hmm. uh would it be fair to say house producer yeah i, I think so i don't know i'm not really good at yeah, like labeling DJ music so. so pat you know sh uh you know talk your trash and email me or something yeah but pat yeah. is awesome yeah good guy um this is a 12 inch cover you did mm -hmm. and uh, can you tell us a little about this piece um that one was kind of about like dealing with uh I mean, I, I come from a, a religious background. My dad's a pastor of a church in uh, in, in the Boston area. Um, that's where my, my beliefs lie. Um, but there's also a lot of stuff, and with reason, um, some scary, like, theologies and stuff out there. And that piece in particular with the, like, rhino and the headphones going up upwards was um, just, I guess, Focusing on on the relationship and not on the religion so much. Cool. So and that's why they have all those little religious hats on it. So. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. I guess they all look like little pope hats or something. Well, but it, I mean, you know, I wouldn't have thought that initially, which is why I was going to get the backstory. You know, because. Yeah, the rhino and the bees and all the different characters, they all have, like, crazy conceptual stuff. A uh, rhino that I've been painting around town for years has always been a self-portrait um, going through the stories of uh, and the stuff that that I'm going through. So there's a, there's a parallel in what's going on. There's There's been a big, giant beaver that's been popping up for years, too. He's always been this big, fat dude. Sometimes he's a sumo wrestler, but he's the rhino's ego. 
Mm. And so if you look at his facial expressions and stuff like that, and it's it's really just kind of a, a conversation. All my characters, like, represent different personality traits. Like, I have the the stubborn mule and, you know, like the bees represent peer pressure and stuff. And when you start looking at these pictures, a lot of it is about just like making some of the most simple decisions in your life and what you're supposed to do and how your ego can creep up and be like, no, it ain't like that. And, you know, you just start um, getting big headed about something. Um, so a lot of the murals and stuff and the, and the artwork that I've done are actually sometimes just about making like one small decision. Yeah. I mean, because I have, I know there's a there's a children's book you did out there, mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure if, if there are other books, but it sounds as though, given the backstory and all these pieces and these characters, that most people would have no clue about, honestly. Yeah. I mean, hopefully in time there will be a kind of a, not necessarily comprehensive, but an yeah. attempt at a comprehensive scribe book with a backstory, you know, even if it's, I mean, just for the information sake. Yeah, you know? no, and I am actually working on something like that that's sort of in a graphic novel. Yeah. Um, type deal that kind of tells how the the rhino came to the he go ends up going to a specific island for a while and just kind of searching through through life I guess and uh, mm -hmm. throughout that just I guess like a map there's going to be a key on what some of those characters represent and stuff and it'll help people guide through the comedy part of it but kind of see the serious side of it as well. Absolutely, cool. All right, let's get to some of the stuff on your side. I can hold the back okay. if you're going to do some shifting. But uh, here we go. This is this is the big moment. <laughs> Exclusive. <laughs> nah, I just uh, I've been getting into the toy scene. Um, I don't know if I'm yeah yeah here I'll uh, right. I don't wanna, I'm not going to drop it, but I'll uh, give a little three D perspective here. Yeah. Um, I just I've had those for a tiny bit, but we haven't really had the chance to talk about it because they uh, we were kind of waiting for it to go into um, production. Yeah. And. Uh, Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm really psyched because I've always wanted to see my stuff 3D. I hooked up with a, some people, um, a gallery slash toy store in San Diego called Cardboard Spaceship. Um, they're the ones that are actually producing and having the figure made. Um, I went out and had a show with them, and it was probably one of the most pleasant experiences I've had in a show. Awesome. Um, they, you know, there was no... There was no stress. I mean, everything just kind of went like clockwork. Everything that they ever said that they wanted to do or would do, they did. Mm -hmm. And working working your way up through the gallery, seeing that <coughs> that kind of stuff can be tough. And I'm sure you deal with similar mm -hmm. situations. I don't travel it. I mean, but it's a different uh, thing. But I hear but, you. I mean, well, just getting paid by club owners when yeah. you thought you were going to get paid and stuff, and just dealing with people that are upfront. Sure. But these guys have been great, and they came to me and they said we want to do a figure, and I've always been really. Um, nervous about doing stuff with the rhino because it's kind of been an icon for mm -hmm. a long time and uh, you can get into some like weird rights issues and stuff uh, but the relationship with these guys are right and uh, these they they kind of ended up helping a dream come to kind of like the children's book thing um, that was uh, shake it records in cincinnati that mm -hmm. put it out and uh, that guy helped, you know, fulfill a dream, too. And he was equally as easy to work with because it was just one of those things where he said, you do what you do, and when the time comes and it's time to produce it, um, you know, I'll write the check. He was extremely fair about how we were going to split stuff up. Mm -hmm. um, never stepped on my toes artistically. Uh, made a couple suggestions that ended up being the right ones. Hooked me up with his wife, who helped write the story and fix um, my poor grammar, and t and took it to where it should have been. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so you wrote the off. you wrote the storyline as well. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. I wrote I wrote the original idea for the story, and then we kind of started popping the um, text back and forth and making suggestions and. Uh, Dean, you know, I don't know if you ever noticed, but when it goes onto the island, it switches into a rhyme. Uh, mm -hmm. scheme for a while and she was the one that took it there and so she took the meat of what I was saying and started rearranging words and you know we talk about like where we wanted it to go and made some you know editing choices on it and she I was really excited about how the artwork was coming out but I was really scared about the um, text part of it and she brought it up to where I was happy to see it go out so. cool so, so I found out today, actually, uh, we just sold out. There's no more. Nice. So hold on to it, please. I have one. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're are, there, are there any stores that people can still acquire them at? Um, I hear that. I, I know people that are still ordering them through Barnes & Noble and stuff. If you go in there and ask for, there's an octopus under my bed, um, you might be able to find one. But I know that 
Um, my publisher, who was originally shipping them to the uh, um, distributor, just shipped me the last box. So they're nice. gone. So I took them. Congrats, so, as thanks. you should. Yeah, thanks. So this is a figure that's going to mm -hmm. be, when do you think it's going to be available for sale? Um, that's a hard question. I mean, right now they're saying that the production should only take like a month or so, but there's always, you know, it's like a CD coming out. Yeah, it's so, nice. Yeah, it's like you almost don't want to say it, but I think that it would be fair to say like early summer. Sure, um, summer and, 2009. Yeah, and then what we're doing with it is like the... The company makes it and base coats everything and like does all the color work on it, but to like give it a personal touch and make it look like something that I actually worked on, I'm actually taking on doing the black painted line work on on all 50 of these that we're making uh, because I want everybody that buys one to like have a little bit of something that that I actually touched and worked Absolutely. on. And that way, each one will be numbered. Each one will be have a tiny bit of uh, uniqueness to them. So this is like the prototype. Yep, this is the first one. So they're they started pumping these out. I guess two days ago. And and is this with the line work or without the line work? Because um, I see black, but I'm not sure you know to what yeah, extent you're going to yeah, add to it. Yeah, this is the, the black line work that's on there. It's the stuff that makes it look like my illustrations and stuff what I when I paint on walls. So so did you actually add that to this mm -hmm. one? Yeah. Cool. Because, I mean, you know, you, you do it so well, it's hard yeah. for me to tell sometimes whether it's printed or whether you actually did it. Good. That's the, I mean, that's what, yeah. I'm, that's what I'm shooting for. I got cool. another one, another version of it, because right. we also, we have 50 of this, of this little green dude uh, coming out that's more of like the base coat, what we call the production. And he does version. have something magical in his, I didn't, I didn't yeah. show them. Yeah, over, okay. yeah, a little plunger. All right. What's the plunger about? Um, I, I was always into like the... Tom and Jerry type artwork, and, you know, like the Tom and Jerry where awesome. they were, like hitting each other with like frying pans and stuff. Yeah, it's actually the new. Yeah, uh, the uh, um, the, the new ones are a little bit more suction cupped out and stuff. But uh, when I started making him battling the bees and and battling some of that other stuff, I could I just I recognized early that a lot of younger kids and families were going out and looking at my artwork. They would roll up while I was painting and be like. You know, when I get my son on the weekends, we always bike ride by your stuff. Wow. And I think that there's a responsibility in what you're doing, especially in such animated artwork. Um, if that many people are looking at what you're doing, um, not that I'm, like, edit, self-editing myself, but um, in order to make sure and, like, reach that crowd with some of the beliefs that, that I uphold, I... It can't go painting a gun in somebody's hand because I want to like look hard for the graffiti community or something. No. It's just not, it's not really me. So I started switching it, thinking about like, you know, Tom and Jerry frying pans and stuff like that. And then there's also like this really like silly conceptual stuff of like when he's having these conversations and you like basically finally kind of like do a breakthrough. I mean, what do you do when you unclog a toilet? You know, you kind of like break start it. New. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you break it through and. <laughs> Um, so it's kind of funny that that was his tool because it's something that's like you know usually used to like unclog and. Do you think um, about your pieces when you actually do use a plunger? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I guess that's where it came. It's awesome. From. I mean, it's just just the idea of unclogging something and making it work again. Uh, but at the same time, you can grab it by the handle and smack somebody in the head with it. Maybe after you, you know, do it <laughs> well, the but. dirty plunger. <laughs> when would be the last time that you would feel like as though you unclogged something in your life? And if you know, not to be too personal, but yeah. if you're willing to share, um, I think that. Oh, man, that's a hard. That's a hard question. Uh, I think that I this year in particular. I just decide. I always felt like I had a, a fairly decent work ethic. And it was really to step it up to like when working with cardboard spaceship and other people and, and always coming through and doing what I said and also not being afraid to say no in certain situations. Mm -hmm. I still feel bad about saying no uh, because I want to help and I want to be involved um, with things. But to to learn how to say no and, and be able to stand by it is something. And that, I think that that was one of my breakthroughs was I, I need, I had to start being focused about what I wanted to do, not just for me, but I mean, for my family, because if I got stressed out, um, it was hard not to bring it home. That's where I am. Yeah. I'm yeah. a pretty stressful dude. And so, you know, when you, uh, when you finally <laughs> get to that point where you can just say no and, and be okay with it mm -hmm. and, uh, and know when to say yes, um, 
it, you know, sometimes even saying no means saying no to your friends. But if they're if they are good friends, um, you know, they'll know what's up and they'll know that you're there for them when the time's right. I wasn't too upset when you told me, you know, like you know about that project we were talking about. <laughs> and it just I was I was a little heartbroken for a second, but I've gotten over. I said, you know, Scrub's a good guy, and I'm not going to be mad yeah. at him. Yeah, well, you were kind of irritating there. No. So. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> All right, what else do we have in the Magic uh, Santa scribe bag? No, this is kind of the same deal. Um, but we're doing 20, 20 of them that I'm actually going to paint from scratch. Wow. So um, I just recently, so we were talking about history in Westport, the karate dojo that's on Broadway. Yeah, absolutely. I repainted the back side of it. Okay, so the front is like that kind of wispy yeah there's that big sort of dragon, oh, and then, a dragon there's that, yeah. then there's that wispy thing with those weird pigs that look like they're from the uh return of the jedi okay and then you go around onto the back side of it and uh my friend um jason and i uh painted it 20 degree weather ice was frozen was on that the wall. how recently um weeks ago all right cool literally weeks ago first thing i've painted out outside in a while so probably in january Oh yeah, January two thousand nine. Yeah, yeah, January two thousand nine. Uh, we literally had a blowtorch out there, and we're melting the ice off the wall because it was just uh, too much. But right. we got through it and uh, painted yeah. some fun characters on the there. The dues never stop being paid. So, um, wow. So this is the other Lord. version of it, the, like hand painted one that looks a little bit more like what's on the wall. But actually, this character is the one that's on the back side of the karate dojo. And he's wearing the uh, the like Bruce Lee Game of Death outfit. Um, so I'm going to be doing 20 of these where I'm actually going to do additional sculpts that sit inside of his backpack and like paint different types of outfits and whatever. And, and those will be available in like the summertime through the uh, San Diego Comic Con when Elisa and I go out there to, to visit for that. This reminds me of a piece that I saw at the, the pitch show they had. Um, the art show, I think that's where it was. You did mm -hmm. some of the smaller characters, and I wish yeah, I yeah. bought them, and I didn't. They're sold. But I think they are actually sold by the time I got there, in my own defense. Yeah, but yeah. So there's 20 of these and 50 of the others. Yep, yep. So um, given, uh, you know, your abilities and such, they're going to be fairly pricey? Um, the what, uh, what the, the, the hand-painted ones, so, I mean, they're not going to be... I don't know yet. It's relative. Yeah, I shouldn't yeah. say it that way. No, no, no. It's, no, it's not. But you know, I, mean, it's, I wish I could say something because if somebody was into it, then they'd, they'd know what they might be dealing with. Um, but we're still waiting on a couple production things to come back. But those those issues will be posted on my website and stuff real soon. Okay. Scribes Walk. So, scribeswalk.com. All right. Again, I'm getting that piggy bank started. You know, it's a recession nowadays. We all have to have our piggy banks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. The art, the art game is, uh, f is has felt the recession. Yeah. Um, and stuff, you know, pretty good. But uh, I'm definitely, I've been blessed that things have been moving along. I've been doing a lot of the toy things and a lot of the toy collectors. Uh, shout outs to everybody on the uh, Kid Robot forums who are really dedicated to what they collect and do because uh, it's helped support my family. And it's also given me something to do painting these crazy toys and stuff. Um, his, I mean, I just love seeing the characters 3D. I mean, it finally left the walls, and I can hold them and play with them, and my kid can play with them, or somebody else who, who bought it. So, um, how, how many types of characters had you done previous to this run that's about to come out? Because you've done some. This is, this is my first toy that's like a legitimate like production um, thing. But uh, as far as like the hand painted like toy modification stuff. Um, I'm not really sure. There's a section on my site that says custom toys. It doesn't even have all of them on there, but I just started doing that like last, I just started last summer and I've lost count. Sure. So. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah. Well, um, we, I want to get to the other, um, well, let's just do it. We'll go to the, uh, the photo montage, which okay. is more of a uh, family and friends, personal yeah. life things. Yeah. I mean, uh, we've talked about like some personal stuff. I mentioned my wife and like, I love my kids, Elijah and Jonah. And I, when I sent you this clip, I just thought that um, there are some people in there that are inspirations to me. They're just like some random photo, funny photo is in there that are just my, me or my friends being silly. But also some of the toys are in there. And it's just kind of a medley of everything that like I guess mashes this whole thing together. Cool. Well, now we'll send it to you and you get to witness it. And um, 
I just want to make use of you being here. So I'm going to come back. I'll ask you a couple of, of my little Miles Monty Show questions. Great. And then we'll go to some music. And um, thanks for checking it out. Here we go. Photo montage. And fade to black. <laughs> Absolutely. He was actually there before I was last time. We were talking about the Mondays night. Monday nights that Jock and I just started at the Phoenix. Um, a case of the Mondays, which I kind of thought both represented um, people thinking that Mondays are lame and bad. Garfield. I, yeah. Garfield hated Monday. 
But Garfield would love Case of the Mondays because yeah, our yeah. case is actually a record case oh, full yeah. of jazz and uh, jazzish gems. Cool. And I enjoy hearing him play. So come out to Phoenix on Mondays in uh, February and March of 2009. Yeah, segue into Tuesday. If we get canceled, way. yeah, if we get canceled, we won't be there past March. So, uh, you know, help a brother out. Yeah. All right. So, uh, again, a photo montage there of um, some of. Uh, you know, a taste of your life and those who inspire you and mm -hmm. around you. So thank you for both of those, by the way. Oh, no problem. No problem. Um, Thanks for putting them on. No, absolutely. Um, the buses. Mm -hmm. You did some Kansas City buses. Is it worth getting? I mean, whatever you want to say about the bus, I'm just saying, hey, how'd they come about? But you can answer the question however you want. But there are buses, which I think is huge, yeah. around Kansas City that have your artwork all over them. Some of them focused on reading. I don't know if they're all about reading. Yeah. But anything you'd like to say about the buses? Um, well, the reading one specifically goes to schools and stuff, from what I understand, and they do like uh, book drives and stuff. So it's not re it's not fit inside for people to really be driving around in because they kind of made this lounge feel for kids to chill out in. So it's just a fun bus that rolls up to schools. Um, not really sure what they're doing with it now. Uh, the new ones, the Seymour Green, uh, the Frog buses and stuff, was uh, you know the the transit systems like attempt at trying to like reach out to a younger crowd and and just talk about the relevancy of uh you know not spending money on gas and finding other ways to get there and i actually still do that i still um you know like my wife and i have one car and i'll walk from my house up in deep westport and walk up to 39th and main at four in the morning and still take the bus wow um i like it i mean it's a great place to think and see other cartoon characters um so cool. but uh it, you know there was a lot of controversy about it i didn't it kind of reminded me like i have a ton of things i love about kansas city and then it mm. just it helped remind me of some of the issues <laughs> coming up on the questions say, yeah um Can you hold this a second yeah yeah and so i just uh i thought it was really strange how people took it to um they got into like race issues it got into stereotypes um it got into all kinds of things that I never thought that people would take it to. Can you break down any of that? Because no one would have any clue as to what you're actually... I mean, it um, doesn't have to be specific, you know? Well, just, I mean, I, I, if I could choose one of the paths that it went down, there were some comments about how one of the illustrations I did had like a cur like a bent sign and there were some cracks on the sidewalk and the dude was like chilling on the bench and that was the main one that was set it off. I think I remember reading um, that once. Yeah, that was the one that made it in the front page of the paper, which was great because the complaints got me on my paper, got me in the paper and uh, so thank you to the people that uh, freaked out over a silly frog. What was the issue um, about? I don't recall. Was it that they thought he was on crack or something? Um, they just thought that the way that he looked uh, was not a good image for the city. And, and I can see their point to a degree, but it's a diverse city. Yeah. There's all kinds of different people. And the one part that they kind of skipped over because they only wanted to focus on that particular image it's just weird. They saw that guy, the way that he was sitting, even the stance that he was sitting, as something that was undesirable. And really I saw threatening. It, and I saw it as somebody chilling on a bench in a stylized world. Um, you know, there's cracks in the sidewalk, so I don't know where people are walking. But where I They're walk... They're not walking. Yeah, Welcome but, to Kansas yeah. City. But when I'm walking, there's cracks in the sidewalk, and uh, I like it. You know, there's, yeah. there's cracks in people's faces, too, and oh, wrinkles, doubt. so it's just... It's the same thing, and then they started taking it into like, well, he's got a hoodie on, and look at his pants and stuff. So he can I'm, never get into the power and light district. So, like that. Yeah, yeah, I heard that comment too. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, that was on there. There's a thread. There's somewhere on the Kansas City Star. If you see the actual posted one, you can read some of these. Was comments. that was that like so, a um, a negative aspect that he couldn't get into power and light that way? Um, yeah, there were some people that had. Well, you just have to read. The, there were some suggestions okay. well, on how he could go there and stir it up and what else he could do there. That's right. Um, some people started assigning colors to it of, like, what color this frog represented as like far skin as, like, color? skin color. And that just kind of threw me for a loop because I just didn't realize that there was that many uniforms for different types of people. And... Uh, <sighs> 
So a, a hooded sweatshirt and a jeans, you could take it how you want, but you can go to Johnson County Community College and see, like, you know, maybe not as diverse in one direction, but I guarantee you're going to see a lot of hoodies and a lot of jeans. And yeah. then you can come down, you know, to Midtown or Troost or wherever you want to go, you're going to see more hoodies and jeans. Yeah. So I'm not really sure where the color thing came up from, but I know that there's a lot of paranoia here. Abby Crombie and Fish makes uh, hoods and jeans as well. Yeah, so does Gap. You so know? does Gap. You know, the only thing, my That's only comment I, 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 I didn't understand is, uh, and I'm not bashing sports or anything like that, but I wondered, because he had a red hoodie on, that if I just would have put the Chiefs logo on this, that nothing would have happened. Right. Don't let me get into the Chiefs. <laughs> So I don't. I mean, that's I don't double, follow sports. Uh, that's a double negative. Yeah, right there. yeah. So I don't. I don't know that much about sports, but I, I have a feeling that there would have been um, not as much of an edge. Or sure. Who knows? They, they. I mean, they don't allow sports paraphernalia, shirts and stuff, into Power and Light. So maybe it would have been worse. I mean, you never know here. That's true. But um, there were frogs that were wearing suits. Um, there were frogs that were kind of like on more of a hip hop. I guess like street flavor. Yeah. Um, there were the, there were old fat frogs sitting on the on the bus with their groceries. I read a comment that the the frogs in suits were negative because they represented white collar criminals who might have embezzled money or <laughs> or defrauded people of their bonds and stocks. Yeah, you know them frogs, man. That's what they do. <laughs> they're they're it's green. Not being green. Yeah, they're yeah they're green looking for more green. So uh, or they have green eyes of envy, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it was a, uh, it was fun to watch that whole thing transpire. And actually, a lot of the complaints started on a forum called the KC Rag. And the star called me and asked me about it. And they were like, "What do you think about this?" And I was like, "I read. I looked on the comments. I, you know, I, I look on that thre on different threads and read stuff. I don't participate so much." And he was like, "Well, what do you think?" I was like, it's 10, 10 people on the Kansas City rag. Why are you calling me? <laughs> they need information. Man. You know, and he was like, well, there's obviously been a buzz about this. And um, the guy was really nice from the right, star, right, right. actually. Um, but I still was kind of blown away because there were 300 people that submitted to name the frog. Okay. Um, I'd like to get these little one-on-one -on -one shots. Yeah. There was, uh, there was 300 people that, you know, wanted to name the frog and be involved in the process but you know the star or the or the news media didn't get involved in that part of the process they get involved in the the 10 people that stirred the pot and pointed out something that they thought was negative creating the paranoia in others and so some people would agree and some people wouldn't and it started this crazy argument it worked well, for me though i had so many people go to my website as a result that it, it shut my website down because there were bandwidth issues and shut stuff it down. and uh i got some nice emails through there too that were like hey i've been into your work for a while and i never knew you had a website and i saw the story in the star and now i know it's there there you go uh so uh, thank you for those that that complained and thank you for uh to the tr um to the metro for standing by me uh, through the whole thing because well, uh, they they, they liked didn't it. remove it. No, they didn't remove it. Um, they liked it, and uh, you know what what they ended up telling me was there's more people talking about the bus, and that's what we want. Well said. Um. I hesitate to discuss light rail, <laughs> but I uh, am interested anyway. Um, Okay. Some of the people that complained actually took it to the point that they thought that the negative images of the frog would encourage people to not vote for light rail. The negative images of the frog would encourage people to not vote for light rail. Because, because it was portraying that a certain type of people take public transportation. So that why would you had vote their own for agenda something? agenda ahead of time. Yeah. yeah. The way people around here mask things is... Uh, not very well done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I will say just uh, my power and light bit for the show that the fact that the power and light, for those who are unaware, um, wouldn't allow, or at least some areas of it, I don't know, wouldn't allow men to wear visible jewelry. Really? That seemed to be the most absurd. Well, I didn't know I, that. I assume that doesn't include wedding rings, which is also jewelry. Mm -hmm. But... Um, I don't I, go to I, Power and Light. Yeah, I've been down there. I visited it. It was cool to see um, some growth in Kansas City. I'm not really into the rural systems and stuff. Uh, when I moved here in 93 
from Boston. First thing I did was grab my new roommate from Chicago, and he, I said, let's go see a movie. And he said, uh, where are we going to go? I said, I don't know, but I, I know that there's buses that go down Main and Broadway. But I'm sure that if we just take the bus down to where the bigger buildings are and we get off, we can just ask somebody and find it. And he was like, all right. So we jump on the bus and we ride all the way down. First, we waited a long time for the bus. This is before they ran more often. Mm -hmm. um, then we get on the bus and we jump off, and the bus driver even asked us, are you sure you want to get off? And we said, yeah, why? And he's like, all right, man. And he let us off, and we looked around. There was nobody there. About what street was that, roughly? Um, the main junction on, like, Main and, you know, like, like 12th. Yeah. Yeah, kind of, like, around that area. Yeah. And we walked into the heart of it and looked around, and that's when I was like, why did I move here? <laughs> all right. Um, Which brings me to um, three questions. Mm hmm um, I've been getting semi-harassed by some people asking me to have repetitive questions on each episode, and I'm giving in in this moment. But there are things I ask anyway. Okay. Um, real quick, so running out of tape. How can you improve? Whatever that means to you. How can I improve? Um, I can improve as a father and a husband. No. So, um, I mean, there's the obvious stuff about your craft. Um, you can always improve and refine um, you know, that's probably a little bit more uh, subjective, you know, to people on, on what's an improvement. Because I could go one direction and they can say, I liked his old stuff. So that part of it doesn't really matter. But in my personal life, um, I can, you know, step up one more thing at a time. Um, and in doing this, set the right kind of example for my kids by having a good work ethic. Um, you know, minus my school, because I didn't have a lot of school situations um, that were good. Um, and uh, then to just consistently be a good husband so that my wife will, uh, you know, not beat me. <laughs> <laughs> well said. How can Kansas City improve? It's the last question. Um, I think it's, I, from what I've seen, you know, especially since I just told that story, um, Power and Light District is not something I'm totally into. But I was excited to see people walking around. Um, I was excited to see life. And if the life in the buildings are there, then maybe someday over time the rule systems can change. But at least that the, the buildings and everything are in place for us to change. Um, so it's, it's got sort of a jump start to it, in my opinion. Um, I think it's cool to see a lot of Alexander Austin murals down there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he did a lot of murals on Troost and stuff, and it's cool to see him downtown. I'd like to see a tiny bit more variety. No offense, Alexander. No, I will say, actually, uh, that he but, didn't design them. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I read an article. They, he, someone submitted designs that he then, carry, as far as I understand, carries them out and then, like, perfects. Oh, so wow. it's definitely his hand, mm -hmm. but there's um, more outside influence, as wow. far as I'm aware. I didn't realize that. I've seen him working around there, and I was just excited to see yeah, him. Yeah, no, that's good either way. I was excited to see him working there, and I was excited to see Kansas City, regardless of like the direction they went with Power and Light District, um, at least some art is involved in it. The people that do like Avenue of the Arts and, and different um, the 1% for Art program and stuff are saying that the different sculptures or whatever need to be installed down there. Mm -hmm. And it's been cool to see it go from like a ghost town from like the arts area to downtown uh to like whether you like what's going on or not like there's a lot more visually entertaining things for me to see on yeah. the on the way down there and i can pass um power and light and still see some cool stuff and turn around and come back home awesome well thanks so much for being here no problem I thanks appreciate it and uh we're gonna get some records that you brought and okay. um, we'll hop into the other section of the studio the multi-million dollar facility and uh follow up there cool so let's let's break down this uh, vinyl you brought. Let's see if I can. Aha! Uh -huh. All right. right. Yeah. Basement Chemist. Everybody. Which are you gonna play the Everybody side? Yeah, that's my favorite. By uh, Jay McIntosh and Jay Lee, yeah. otherwise known as Jog Max and Jay Lee. Pre Taha Basement Chemist, kinda maybe. Yeah. All right. So we'll um, position this so. Cool. And what is it about this recording that we were just discussing that that you enjoy? Um, um, I mean, a huge part of it is the the message really speaks to me. Um, 
I, I kind of, it's something I think about, I guess, when I'm painting, uh, when I'm trying to paint, I guess, a message and a story, but also kind of like when my children's book came out, it was something that I was extremely proud of. Um, it was fun to see somebody that I respected so much um, and a good friend, a good mentor to me um, get something that he wanted and uh, that was to have his stuff on wax and I just, I always remember um, there was a lot of pride in his eyes when, when this came out. No doubt. Here we go. Basement Canvas, uh, Basement Canvas everybody. Beyond Real Recordings, shout out to DJ Spinner who uh, looks as though released this. Mm -hmm. Cool. Jock Max. J. Lee. Yeah. Hit a shed a little light on those who can't see, man. That's our purpose, you know? It'll let y'all know that everything that's going on out here right now in these days ain't right. It's extremely wrong. And I'd be wrong if I went along with it. So film me right quick. Check it out. Yo, yo, in 25 years, life's meaning that I discovered. It's lost individuals follow each other to they death. Society makes us more bitter. In turn, racism kind of hard to get rid of. Dear father, I knew it wasn't meant to be like this. And so you wouldn't have created man in your likeness. But God's time is hard more now than ever. Your words my serenity for goals I endeavor. From my falling short, there's no explanation. So from Genesis to Revelations, I study your expectations. Hoping I can get one step closer to approval Don't want to make decisions that result in my removal From the book of life, live a trife, it ain't worth it The bones that we bury once they touch the surface A message to the clowns living life like a circus Wasting it is kind of worth Check it Check yo, a slug and a thug, but shot in the hard rock Chilling a slow figure, a knife in the triumph But the means one less life to lead Homies bleed like roses, wilt like roses the book of life closes with stiff poses. Suppose this brother here had a rack career. A property where most statistics only drinking beer. Getting weeded out 24 7. Can't get a job because I robbed the 7 Eleven. That's a felony. So what y'all telling me? They're checking backgrounds. I try to get a gig at UPS. I got clown. Same thing goes on everywhere I look. I'm 25 years old. I can't be no hamburger cook. Standing at the bus stop getting mud splashed on me. My brothers with go reds. My future looks grim. I want to be like Mike up the street with the big. In a grand Cherokee Jeep with some friends That ain't me, the kind of life for me's forbidden I just gotta get your quote and get the whole world open, y'all Ha, uh, oh, oh, it's like this, yo It's like this, yo Check it out, everybody on the street should know The devil's after your mind and after your soul If you let him take it, then you never gonna make it If you persist with the word for God, you'll persist For so long, I'll live my life naive, being deceived Getting caught up in the devilish web that men weave Hard to believe the answers were right there in a household right My bad. the living room chair. Before I didn't care about sinning on Monday or drinking Alize after service on Sunday. But the truth opened my eyes and made the world look despicable. Which ways is predictable from lost individuals to images on TV that portray how we live in. A sight blind lies from the world's most religions. But Jah opened me up and made it easy to interpret. And screw me on the ways of the original serpent. Son, the last days is here and you can tell from the seasons. Countless murders in our areas for ignorance. With reasons. We got the felonies, the misdemeanors, lies, and treasons. Ain't no hearts growing cold in these days, they freezing. So in the last days, it's here, and you can tell from the seasons. Countless murders in the area for ignorant reasons. But, uh, yo, 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 but, uh, yo, 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 hey, yo, yo. Everybody on the street should know the devil's after your mind and after your soul. If you let him take it, then you're never gonna make it. If you persist with the word for God, you'll persist to exist. Everybody on the street should know the devil's after your mind. Hip hop. Do you have an idea of approximately what what uh, year that might have come out in? Honestly, I have no idea. Honestly, I can't remember. I, I just remember we were. I think we were still doing the show on KKFI. What was the name of that show again? Um, Massive Mondays. Yeah, Massive Mondays. It was me, Gear, and Danny Girl. Hi, Danny Girl. That's right, Danny Girl. 
I uh, I believe there are audio tapes out there of that show. I'm not sure if anybody has any. I wish I could get one. Yeah. Well, I will I will look for them and we'll uh, I'll record them and we'll get some podcasts going and we'll spread them around. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a uh, wonderful Kansas City about history. For those who are unaware, obviously Kansas City does have a very uh, diverse and worthwhile music scene. I feel bad even touching the needle, so I'm just gonna let this play out for a second. Jock Max on the beat, previous guest, mentor to all. Yeah. <laughs> In what ways did Jock mentor you, would you say? Uh, I heard you mention that. Yeah, just just really being who he was and always having like a, a sweet spirit about him when you know, when he was talking in his interview about how it's hard for sometimes people think that he was unapproachable. Um, you know, I think the only reason why I may have ever thought that at the beginning it was because I had so much um, esteem for him and had so much respect for him. Uh, but it was up to me to like kind of step over that boundary. But then once I started getting to know him, um, he was just an incredible person. Uh, he DJed at my wedding, you know, played some music at my wedding, and uh, brought his lovely wife and uh, kid. And um, just, I guess, the way that he handles his life and his marriage and everything like that's an inspiration to me. He's just got a sweet, sweet soul about him. Absolutely. So. Cool. So what's the next selection you brought? This is a uh, Red Baron. All right. The Red Baron one. Red Baron track, which is 3B. Yeah. Billy Cobham? I know the name, but is it you say it Billy Cobham? Yeah. Cobham? I don't know. Um, I'm not really sure on the pronunciation. Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. C-O-B-H-A-M. The album is Spectrum. Yeah, sorry. Were you going to say this song? What's up? Uh, what, about, what about the song were you going to mention? Um... I mean, this is this is something that reminds me of uh, when I was involved with Flavor Pack, mm -hmm. um, and also a lot of songs that I have and own. Uh, I always see, I guess, as soundtracks for cartoons I would work on, <laughs> and uh, on this one in particular, um, I can see a lot of a lot of characters and stuff walking around. And is this reflective of that of that era for you? Yeah, this is this reminds. I mean, I always get taken back to uh, an old um, video that was shot with Jeremy McConnell. Um, so shout out to Jeremy and all the stuff that he did with Flavor Pack and like an older hip hop scene here in Kansas Absolutely. City. Um, but he shot some video and he did a lot of like documentary stuff and. Uh, there, there's a ver this song that um, we'll play. Like there's uh, Burroughs over it doing some of his spoken word stuff, but it's right. not on this. But it was a version that uh, Jeremy had. When I found this, it was just the track part. Awesome. Um, but it just I always think of cartoons when I see this. Cool. Some pimped out fat rhinos walking <laughs> down the street or something. All right, I'm gonna try and magically find this at the beginning of that second part. Let's you let me know. Before then? That's a little bit before. Before then? Yep.
Thank you, Scribe. Thank you. That was the uh, beautiful interview. And this is the uh, Blue Note Flyer. This, uh, what is it? I don't know. It's probably over by the time I put this up. Miles Body Show. Have a wonderful day. I'm doing this thing on a Tuesday. Bobby Watson and stuff. It's going to be a Blue Note Records oh, really? party. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. I'm just going to be DJing. I mean, it's, it's to promote the upcoming Blue Note show. That'll be the show. Like the main, like the main jazz saxophonist in the head of the young kids in jazz. Oh, yeah, I got dope. Is that the guy with the dope? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like the main dude. They're pretty excited about it. There's a player from the sale. Like, got on. Oh, yeah, but he's not a sale. He's 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 a I love his music. I actually, when he was around, I tried to, well, when I saw him, I tried to ask him for more recordings, but he hardly ever had any. That he did, did by himself. He had some demos and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Mr. Gibbons, the guy in there, he's got tons of, he had a stack like this high. And he was um, like, this one right here, the entire thing was done in one take. This one right here. Like, I need to just stop by. So you should stop some by and cash. see him. He, uh, um, he actually yeah. um, Goes in and out of town because he's got several karate dojos. Like well, he's, he mainly lives in Colorado. But I was, if you go in and ask, like when the next time he's.